Hey, good morning, Central. Stand up with us. Let's sing along. Let's welcome the Lord in this place. Come on. I know you know it. Sing it out. Casting my cares aside, I'm leaving my past behind. I'm setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours. I'm leaving this so much more. Than just knowing that all you have is.
underneath my feet You are my sword and shield Though troubles will linger still Whom shall I fear? Sing, I know
just respond to the words you have. I just pray we can worship you, God, in spirit and truth, because you're worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. You'll never leave us, God. You go before us and you stand up, stand behind us, God. And we hold on to your promises, God, because you are God and you cannot lie. You are faithful to the end. It's all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to welcome everyone this morning to Central Baptist. Thanks for checking us out. For all the first time um, guests out there, we're glad you're here. We really are. And we want to treat you in our home. We want to, want to treat you as guests. We want to show you around. We want to worship with you. Treat you as one of our own because you are. If you're the body of Christ, you believe in Jesus Christ, you are family with us. And we are certainly glad you came to check us out today. In the back of your bulletins, there's a guest information card. If you could just take a few minutes, fill it out for us. At the end of the service, you can go back to our welcome booth in the foyer. We're going to have a little gift for you. We just want to get to know you a little bit, invest into you as a family. As of right now, I do see a lot of new faces this morning. I want you to go around, find someone new, shake some hands this morning. What a great beginning to the service today. We're looking forward to continued movement of the Spirit. One of the joys of being a part of a church service is the giving opportunities that arise. You know, this church is so generous. So many things happen. I had a guy just this week call me and wanted to make sure we had everything we needed for kids going to camp and, and sent me a check and then other things happening. We're doing things every week, vacation Bible school. But I thank you for your giving. And this is an opportunity to join in that in worship. So ushers are here at the front. But before they receive the offer, I want to read some scripture to you. This morning's service is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to preach, but we're going to make it a little interactive because we're talking about praise. We're doing out of the book of the Psalms, the songs that, that change your life. And the last psalm says, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty firmament, praise him for his mighty acts, Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And all the people said, praise the Lord. Amen. You know what? We're going to show you a video just at the end of the offering, and I want you to get a feel for a world of praise. But at this time, let's join in the giving opportunity, and may God bless you as you give today. Father, bless this opportunity to share of what you've given us with your kingdom work both here and around the world. And thank you 
for the prompting of the Spirit in people's heart to give. May every need be met as people respond in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you to give. Praise is as natural to the believer in Jesus Christ as breathing is to the human being. It is who, it springs not from commandment, but it springs from who we are in Christ. Praise the Lord, all ye nations. I love the sight of those people praising the Lord in different languages because it's a, it's a tiny view of what it's going to be like in heaven someday. We should be people of praise. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. O ye saints that dwell on the mountain of Zion, praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Don't you love to praise the Lord? We sing, across the earth we see, worshipers believe. Hear our song, praise to our God, praise to our God. God be praised, all glory to your awesome name. All creation rising up to say, we know our God reigns. Can you say praise the Lord with me? Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. How can the believer in Christ not have his soul sing? How great thou art. You see, we fought the world and the flesh and the devil for six days. And this is a day of celebration. This is the day when the people of God come to join hands and hearts together and lift our praises to God. To get inspiration, which literally means to breathe in God and to get our eyes lifted up higher and get it off of our petty troubles and trials and give honor to the one who created us, saved us, and has heaven waiting for us. Praise is admiration. It is worship. Unfortunately, worship has divided rather than united, and it should be a uniter. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. With all kinds and all kinds of ways. There's examples for praise in the Bible. The word praise is used as an affirmation or approval. Paul, for instance, in 1 Corinthians 11, refuses to praise the church at Corinth because he says they're misusing the Lord's Supper. Praise is also seen as a spontaneous response to God's power. In Luke 18, 42 through 43, Jesus said to a blind man, Receive your sight, your faith that made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And look at this verse. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. It is a spontaneous response to God's power. When God shows up and does something powerful, the people of God praise Him. And then praise is a reflection on God's presence and power. In the great passage in 2 Chronicles 7 where King Solomon dedicated the temple they had built for the worship of Almighty God. At the end of the time of praying, it says in verse 1, when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the people of Israel saw how fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endures forever. When's the last time in the house of God the Shekinah glory of God showed up in such a way that you fell to your face? and gave praise and glory to God. Oh, for that to happen again. And Luke 19, 37 says, Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, 
Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. The Pharisees that were present that day as the people praised Jesus for his presence as God tried to get them to stop. He said, tell them to quit praising you. And Jesus said, I tell you, if they didn't cry out, the very stones would cry out. For God is among you. How can we not praise God? How can we not give him glory when we are reflecting on his presence and power? And then praise is a verbal expression of our heart's attitude toward God. You know, the Psalms was a hymn book written the beautiful songs for the people of Israel to sing. Sometimes they marched up to the temple, sometimes during this, the times in the temple. But as they sang, they sang praises to God. In Psalm 109.30, it says, I will praise the Lord with my mouth. Yes, I will praise him among the multitude. The psalmist said, I'm making a decision to praise the Lord. I'm not just waiting on spontaneous combustion of my spirit. I'm making a decision. I will praise him among the multitude. I heard somebody talking about nobody singing in church anymore. I don't see that here. I don't hear that here. In fact, I heard you loud and clear a while ago. But how could we decide not to give praise to God? The psalmist said, I will praise him in the multitude. Now, form, praise can take many different forms in the believer's life. As we read in Psalms 150, you have many examples of praise. It can be vocal praise. Songs are certainly part of it. That's what we're doing here today. But shouting can be part of it. Have you ever been in a church where they got so excited they started shouting? Yeah, one, one of us has. One of us has. Some of you are a little afraid we're going Baptocostal on you already. But when I was a kid, we had a man in our cha- a church, Brother Kroll. And I mean, he had been saved out of a life of alcoholism. And when he got saved, as the old preacher said, he got saved all over. And he just couldn't contain himself. And when the preacher said something that stuck... resonated with his spirit, he would shout, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I mean, it was dangerous for visitors to sit in front of him. They didn't know what was coming. It would move your hair in a different direction. But I'm telling you, Brother Kroll, he couldn't contain his praise for the Lord. It was a vocal shout. I know there's such a thing as wildfire, but better wildfire than no fire. And I tell you, I like to see people get excited about the things of God. There can be shouts, songs, cries, and simple declarations of praise. Praise the Lord. There's instrumental praise. You guys help me now. Let's all lower our voices real careful here because I've got some good friends in this city that don't understand this. I'm not picking on him, but the Bible says you can praise the Lord with harps and cymbals and lutes and lyres and tambourine. Lyres, not lying people, but lyres as in you pluck a liar. Tambourines and trumpets. Got a tambourine back there somewhere probably? Yeah, you got one. All right. You say, why is that doing that? Well, that's just kind of a biblical thing. Praising the Lord with these different instruments. I even get excited when they praise the Lord with a cowbell up here. It gets to me. But it's just anything that you can play, you can play to the glory of God. This one's an odd one for we Baptists. Psalms 149.3 talks about dances of praise. In fact, in our text it said, praise him with the dance. That's a little odd for us, rhythmically challenged Baptists. I'm always taken by David's bringing the ark into the city of Jerusalem and the story in Samuel and how he brought the ark there. And he got so excited about the ark coming home to Jerusalem, he danced before the Lord with all his might. It offended his wife. She said, you didn't look very decorous out there. You didn't look very much like a leader. You looked like you weren't, you you know, you didn't have much uh, tact and you you weren't looking really, you know, smooth. He said, I did it under the Lord and I'll do even more. You don't like it. Because I did it under the Lord. It's a weird thing, but it's a biblical thing. Offerings and sacrificial gifts. That's why we talk about an opportunity to give because it's an act of worship when people give. We're, we're taking substance that God has given us and put into our hand and we're being obedient stewards and we're saying, God, we give this as an act of praise. And if you didn't give that way today, go see the treasurer after church and get it back. 
because you lost your blessing. The Bible says if you give and you didn't want to give it, you didn't, then you just lost your blessing. But you give it as an act of love and admiration and respect to the Lord. That's why there's some people that I have to be careful with you because you love to give. You press money on me, not for me, for my, but press money for needs that I mention. And sometimes I don't even see. You just, you know, Pastor, we need to take care of that because you love the joy of giving. Prayer is, an, as, is a way to praise God. Certainly we can praise God in our prayers. Preaching and proclamation is an act of praise. I hope I'm praising the Lord in this sermon today. And we should proclaim Him with praise. And hear this one before the band gets ready, because I want to lead you in another song. I'm, I'm not going to lead you. They're going to lead you. <laughs> it would still be praise. It just wouldn't be as enjoyable. <laughs> but I want to talk to you about living a life that causes praise to come to God. You know, in the story of the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve told, were told to take care of the garden, to take care of the garden. The Hebrew word translated for that phrase, take care, is worship. Did you know that? It's worship. So part of the way we worship is by serving and taking care of the world and the people around us. Isn't that a wonderful thought? As you take care of your family, and you're doing it because God told you to do it. That's an act of worship. As you take care of the people around you, it's an act of worship. And as you take care of your duties in this world and responsibilities, it can be an act of worship if you do it under the glory of God. So all the people said, praise ye the Lord. Say it with me. Praise ye the Lord. Let's stand to our feet and let's give God praise as we sing together again.
May be seated. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yes, I will praise him among the multitude. Why is there difficulty in praising the Lord? What are some of the roadblocks to praising God? We all know that it's the right thing to do. We all understand that God has called us to do it, and sometimes we're even better at it than others. But sometimes there's roadblocks to praising the Lord. One of them is pride. Quite frankly, it is hard to give praise to God when you think you're the center of the universe. And we tend to do that. It's our default position. We're born that way. You can go over to the nursery, and there's some wonderful children. There's only one baby over there without sin today. No, that's not really true. My grandson, Zoe, I was going to say he was out sin, but yesterday he wouldn't share his donut holes with me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is that every child that's born is born with the nature that they need attention, they need care. And so God has built them in a way to focus on themselves. What else can they do as an infant? But it, the problem is sometimes we don't outgrow that. We end up spending our whole lives thinking that people need to cater us and people need to make us the focus of everything that's going on. And that's sad enough in our relationships with family and friends, but it's devastating in our relationship with God. We're too proud to praise Him, too proud to kneel at His altar, too proud to be observed, losing ourselves in prayer. I remember a man who nearly didn't get saved years ago because he said to me, I talked to him personally. He knew he needed Christ as his Savior. He wanted Christ as his Savior. But he said, I don't want to walk down that aisle like some backwoods Yehu. That's okay for you guys, but not me. And he said, I want to get saved some other way. And I said, you know what? Any other person could get saved in their home, could get saved somewhere else, but you can't get saved but one place. And that's when you walk the aisle in front of those people because you've made a point of contention between you and God. And God is, you can say the words anywhere you want to say them, but until that pride is gone and you're willing to do whatever God calls you to do in the moment, then you're not going to get saved. Thankfully, he submitted to that and came forward and got saved in front of people and and he made a great believer in Christ. But my point is, praise is the same way. We have trouble praising the Lord because we don't want to look a certain way. We want to maintain the whatever about us. But it's hard to give praise to God when you think you're the center of the universe. Second thing, dissatisfaction is a roadblock to praise. You know, we don't write letters of recommendation when we think we've got poor service. Isn't that right? I went out of my way. I I try to go out of my way when somebody gives me superior service to ask for their supervisor and say, I want you to know that so-and-so really went beyond and what I think is necessary and really extended themselves to give me good service today. You need to know you got a great employee in that person. I think that's only fair because I'm prone to gripe if I don't get good service. So I think it's only right that I should give praise when I get good service. But we don't like write letters of recommendation when we're dissatisfied with the service. And sometimes we don't give praise to God because if the truth were to be known, we're not happy with what God is doing in our life at the moment. We don't like God's plan for us. We don't like what God's doing. 
it, so it's hard to praise him. Another roadblock to praise is distraction. You won't be awed by God's presence if you're not there to see it. Or will you allow, if you are in the service of praise, you allow minutia to catch your attention. There's an old poem, and I can't get it out, but it's about the cat going to London to see the queen, and they asked her what she saw when she went to the, the throne and saw the queen, and he, she said she saw a mouse beneath the throne. Cats see what they're looking for. And she was distracted. She couldn't see the queen in all of her glory because she saw a mouse. How many people come to church and the minutia of what's going on distracts them from seeing the presence and the power of God? I'm amazed by this. I mean, I can go to some services and just be, walk out of there thinking that was the most incredible experience I've had in my whole life. And somebody else said, did you notice that we had two ceiling towel out of place? I don't understand. We do need to fix the ceiling tile. If they're out of place, I, I, my apologies. But how could you miss what God's doing for the minutia of, of what's happening in a service? And the last thing, and this should sting all of us, and I put my name in here with yours, idolatry. When we allow someone or something to take God's place in our vision. See, Satan doesn't have, the first thing he wants to do is keep you from getting saved. He doesn't want you to take Christ as your Savior. He doesn't want you to admit that you're a sinner and come to Christ and say, please give me eternal life. Because he knows that in the moment you do that, you will become God's child and you will have eternity in heaven with God. He doesn't want that. But if he does fail to keep you from getting saved, what he will try to do is get your attention focused on other idols of life that will keep you from focusing on God. And they're they're, they're as numerous as individuals because we, we don't just create idols of gold and silver and set them up in the town square to worship as they did in the days of the Bible, but we have plenty of idols of our own. Think, it, basically, anything that gets in between you and God becomes your idol. Anything that's keeping you from serving God and praising God is your idol. It might be money. It might be relationship. It might be pleasure. It could even be your own family. We live in the age where family is king, and I thank God for that, at least as a focus on family. But Jesus never said that the primary purpose you have in life is to be a family man or family woman. He said, in fact, there's a possibility in serving me that your family may not understand what you're doing, and I want you to put me above your own family. That doesn't mean you don't love and care for your family, but what it means is we can't let anything become more important to us than God. And if anything's in between you and God, you're not going to praise Him. You're not going to give Him glory because that thing or person or situation or longing is in the way. So we need to remove the roadblocks to praise. I want to give you another chance to sing. Stand with me and the band comes to lead us one more time and pour out your praise to God as we sing the great I Am. Praise the Lord. Stand with us and sing together.
said amen. Say, praise ye the Lord. Lord. Say, great preaching. (laughs) We're in that moment, didn't I? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in his greatness and his majesty. Praise to our King forever and ever. How do you find your rhythm in praise? If it's a song and we're to sing it, where's our rhythm come from? I've got a suggestion or two for you. One, you have to abandon your expectations for how praise should appear. You know, see, praise is more than art than science. Praise may be different in different circumstances. One week praise looks one way, one week it looks something different. The Holy Spirit is infinitely created. He is a living being. I remember a pastor telling me about being in a service where they were so moved by what God was doing, they had people take off their shoes and and stand on holy ground, and they had an incredible service. It was just a moment. The next week, everybody started taking off their shoes again. I said, no, that was that moment. We don't manufacture what the Holy Spirit's doing. We let the Holy Spirit lead us in praise. And we've got to abandon our expectations for what praise looks like. You know, we, we have our idea, but you have to remember our idea is based on our experience. And our experience of God is about this much, and God is this much. I wanted you to see the video of world praise because I wanted you to see people around the world worshiping. Sometimes they're a little different. 
When I was in Tanzania, they, they understood that phrase with a dance. I really had a good time. They laughed a lot at my efforts, but I, they, they praise the Lord, but that's their culture. That's who they are. That's what works for them. It's not necessarily something you make people do. You never make people do anything. That brings me to another point. Replace personal preference with a hunger for holy presence. You know what brings praise into your life? Hope. When you hunger for God, hunger for Him, we sing, I'm desperate for you. And I know sometimes that, that you know, it's like, well, that's just so emotional. But we ought to find times in our life when we're desperate for God. Have you ever been desperate for God in the night hours? I woke up early this morning with a spirit of fear upon me, just coming on. And I, I laid awake for an hour, just knowing that where that came from and knowing it was from the enemy and, and just praying, God, bring, bring me your peace and just quoting scripture, one scripture after another until peace would come. You got to hunger for his presence. You got you to gotta want him like you want, like as the scripture says, as the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul thirst for you, oh God. You've got to thirst for God. You've got to replace personal preference. Well, I like this or I don't like this. Forget what you like and say, I want God. I want God. One of the most striking things I can imagine is the fact that the people that surrounded Jesus, so many of them missed him because he didn't come in the form and the fashion that they preferred. And so they missed him. And it's all my adult life I've when I've tried to be serious, I thought, dear God, don't let me miss a movement of God because it doesn't conform to my expectations and my preference. The third thing is to refuse to judge the praise of others. The issue is, is whether or not God is being honored, not what the believer is doing or singing. Now, this goes two ways. First of all, don't judge people if they are not as exuberant in praise as you are. Some of us are just kind of exuberant. That means excitable. And we get excited. We get excited whether it's a baseball game or football game or car auction or getting to go to Pittsburgh Hot Links, whatever it is, we get excited. But we get excited at church and we're very emotional and outward. Some people are not, they're very inward. That doesn't mean, because you see somebody that's not outwardly demonstrating what you think is prayer, doesn't mean they're not worshiping God. They might be in a much deeper place of worship than people who've got their hands thrown up and their head thrown back. Because we can all turn actions into habits and then there's nothing to them. So you never judge somebody else's praise. Never, never be guilty. Jesus said nobody should be judging each other. They belong to me. The master judges his servants. Who are you to judge? You never say that person's not praising God. I wish they'd learn to praise God. That's not for you to say. You don't know where they are or not. It's also true that when some people get really excited in serving God, it's not for you to say, what's wrong with them? I remember when we first started moving this way, which is still scaring some people. Um, we were having a service, and, and I looked over here, and some young man was over here, and he had kind of, the service was, we were really just like we were just singing, and he was so, he was so moved to the Spirit, he had come over, and he was down in this section here, and he had his, he was bent over the waist, and he had his hands down and out like this, and he would just... He was just in and I, he was just in and I thought, wow, I've never seen that before. I'm not sure if I like that. Did we make him go through a metal detector before he came in here today? This is, this is not what I grew up with. But you know, getting to know that young man, I've never known a more godly young man who loves the Lord with all his heart makes many sacrifices in his personal life so he can serve the Lord. And that was just how God had moved him to praise the Lord that day. And I said, amen. Refuse to judge the praise of others. And finally, focus your attention on the object of praise, not traditions or styles. What is the object of our praise? Certainly not Central Baptist Church. And it's for sure not Kim Beckham. And it's not this incredibly talented worship team. Our object of praise is Jesus Christ. We gather together to praise Him. We need to focus on Him. That's, what, that's when praise and worship works. 
writer I was reading the other day said, I'm reminded there's only one person who matters in real worship, and that's God. So within the boundaries of Scripture, you need to act as if you and God were the only two people in the room and give others the same freedom. Try to close your eyes and just think that Jesus is standing a few feet away from you and let the awareness of his presence intensify and let your inhibitions fall away. I know that's scary talk, but that's who we're supposed to be praising. We're supposed to be praising the Lord, not what does this person think or what are they going to think. I'm here to give you praise. We're here to praise God as if you and he were the only one in the room. My, one of my heroes is Ed Dobson. He was one of the great pastors, fundamental Baptist pastors, pastored a huge church in Grand Rapids, Michigan, worked on the staff at Liberty University, was part of putting together the moral majority. Later in his life, he encountered ALS disease, Lou Gehrig's disease. He's dying of it. It robbed him of his pulpit, robbed him of his physical strength. He said a testimony, I was listening to him preach, and he talked about the last days of his few days that he pastored his church and it was a very formal independent Baptist church like when ours was 25 years ago very formal very formal but he in the worship service he was raising his hand in praise and that's very out of place in that church and he said I know that this upsets some of you for me to do this but I really can't worry about that right now just have to praise the Lord. Let's don't have any silliness. Let's don't have anything done for show. Let's don't have any people making themselves an object that would embarrass the Lord. But let's not forget who we're focusing on. And let's worship as if he and you and he are the only one in the how long has it been since you poured your heart out in an invitation and knelt and gave praise to God? We're going to begin to close this service with an invitation. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet, the whole congregation standing. We're going to have a time of response. During this time of response, it's a time, first of all, for believers to come and say, you know what, Any some of, something the preacher said in there, the Holy Spirit connected with me, and I need to be dealing with that between me and God, and I need to get before God at his altar and deal with that. So believers, you should, the, the first part of this invitation, you, if there's anything between you and God, any con, you need to come and deal and say, God, I surrender to you today. I want to be right with you. Maybe you're here today and God is calling you to join this church. You're saying, this is the place I want to raise my family, be a part of. As an individual, I should be serving God to come and we'll pray with you about that. Maybe you're here today and you've never had that experience of meeting Christ as your personal Savior from sin. Then I want to invite you to come. Take me by the hand and we'll show you how to know Jesus as your Savior. If you talk about praising the Lord, you will be able to praise Him. We have some I know awaiting baptism today. We'll invite you to come get ready for baptism but as we bow our heads today would you like to respond this is part of the worship too this is part of the praise too a response of God's people publicly kneeling and praying and have their heart to God Heavenly Father draw your people as you lead your people by your drawing not mine you do your work Lord according to what you need to do in lives of people Save those who are unsaved. Oh, dear God, let no one leave here without Christ. Help Christians to fall on their faces before God and renew their worship. And Lord, add to your church today. Do your work in Jesus' name as we sing. Amen. Amen. As they sing before us, the altars are open. People are already coming. Come as we sing. Oh, to Jesus I surrender.
again, would you surrender all to God? No, to Jesus I surrender.
up here and mom's back here we, we appreciate it. Becca you know that the Lord has saved you? 
Very good. All right. By the authority invested in me, I baptize thee, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in newness of life. Isn't God great? Amen. What a wonderful service today. It's been a joy to be with you in all of it. Thank you, praise team. Excellent job. Thank you for praising the Lord with us today. If it's your first time here, please come back and be with us again as we'll see you in weeks ahead.